What's going on, everyone? Happy Tuesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long-term issues and no long COVID issues. It's time now for the Tuesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024. Starting off today, if you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily update on all the viruses that are circulating around the world and specifically in the United States. There's a lot of them, including COVID, which is why we call it a pandemic update, because COVID is still a big deal, whether you want to believe it or not. If at the end of this video, you learn anything, maybe you found out that there's, you know, things are circulating much greater than you knew about. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you want to learn more and if you want to stay safe and informed. That's the whole goal of this channel is to keep you informed and to keep you safe. All right, starting off today with our first story, which comes out of Canada. Winter COVID surge continues across Canada. We're going to take a look at a few numbers here. A winter surge of COVID-19 continues to unfold across Canada, leading to a sharp rise in hospitalizations, deaths, and continual mass infections and reinfection of millions. Many of those infected are already suffering from debilitating long-term effects and long COVID. Yes, long COVID is just not in the United States. It's something that is affecting, affecting people all around the world, including Canada. Right now, Canada has about 1.9 million people infected with COVID-19 with an actual infection, not long COVID, but the infection stage. Then you come down here and it does say as of January 9th, that's a little bit behind, 4,705 patients were hospitalized across the country, a further 20% increase over October's figures. The majority of deaths continue to be among those individuals age 70 and over, but we know a COVID death can happen at any age. Keeping on the theme with uh, staying up north in Canada, let's go to New Brunswick now. New Brunswick's COVID-19 pandemic death toll reaches nearly 1,000 now. Yes, not good. And COVID and flu killed five people January 7th through the 13th. Six children under four among 67 people currently hospitalized. So that's not good. Continuing on here, Mass General. So remember over the weekend on Sunday, we were talking about a wastewater and how some cities were just randomly rising again. We weren't trying to insinuate that there was a national rise again. The national trend is downward. However, in some major cities, there just happened to be a rise again on wastewater scan. Well, in response to that, Mass General declares capacity disaster. Far more hospital beds are necessary to accommodate a surplus of patients, a challenge MGH called a full-blown crisis. This was as of January 21st, and let's read a little bit here. It says that Massachusetts General Hospital is facing an unprecedented crisis as it grapples with ongoing capacity disaster that's leaving hundreds of patients without beds. The Boston Hospital announced Friday that its emergency department is reaching critical capacity levels with sick patients waiting several hours for an inpatient bed. Nearly every day for the past 16 months, the hospital's emergency department has operated in a state of code, help, or capacity disaster. So, yes, this is continuing to happen. It's just been continuing to be ongoing for many months. Right now, it's winter. You got COVID, flu, RSV, all kinds of problems. But in between these waves, they also get the effects of people who have long COVID that have a sudden medical emergency while they have long COVID, so they have to go to the hospital. Add on the fact that they do with all the regular stuff that happened prior to COVID, they'll be at probably a higher rate now, and it's a recipe for disaster. Speaking of uh, Boston area, I wanted to show this again. Here it is, Boston. You can see there is a brief rise right now in wastewater again that started back on January 5th. Will it lead to anything? I suspect eventually they're going to start trending back downward again, but for the time being, that you have to point out, and this is from the Wastewater Scan Dashboard. If you go to the CDC site, which I did do, it doesn't update very frequently. This update, you can see, January 5th, January 10th, January 15th. So they're updating every five days at the moment. All right, moving on to our next 
uh, story. This is coming out of Texas. All the ISD cancels classes amid flu and COVID outbreaks. So yes, there are still flu and COVID outbreaks ongoing in Texas. Now moving on to this, U.S. Senator Mark Kelly says he's tested positive for COVID after four years of avoiding it. He is a senator, I believe, out of Arizona, and yes, so he has COVID now. And here's what he says. Unfortunately, after four years of avoiding it, I've got COVID-19. I'm feeling all right and look forward to returning to the Senate for votes as soon as I can, he said on X, formerly Twitter. That's not to say he hasn't had an asymptomatic case over the years, and you know, last several years and just never tested for it. It's possible, but hey, he's saying it's his first case at this time. All right, moving on to this now. This is something that I found to be very interesting. Japan is seeing a sharp rise in COVID hospitalizations. These readings come up to January 17th. And take a look at this chart here. You can see here, since about the end of last year, their hospitalizations at this time are rising relatively rapidly and a lot of that has to do with the JN.1 variant at this time more from the same twitter account corona heads up thailand 718 covid hospitalizations in one week that's impressive for that's quite a high number for uh thailand 209 are battling serious lung infections while 149 require life saving ventilators. Predominant call for behind the new surge is the JN.1 variant. So the JN.1 variant, it is really causing a uh, significant rise in Japan and also in Thailand at this time. All right, let's take a look at the latest air qualities across the country as this loads up. What you will see is it's kind of a mixed bag. It's actually not bad in the West Coast at this time. You can see here, out west, not bad. Pacific Northwest, still some problems. British Columbia and Alberta, Canada, you're having some problems at this time. But then you come to the east. Air quality is just generally poor today across the Great Lakes, the upper Midwest, and across portions of Pennsylvania, the Mid-Atlantic region, even portions of the Northeast. There is a long rotation event that is setting up in the weather department where there's going to be multiple systems that come out of the mid south and if you want to learn more about that i have another channel where we do just that it's called climate data report i will have a link to it down below there'll be a little pop-up that pops up here in the video and you'll be able to see um you'll be able to get to that channel so that's my other channel climate data report where i talk about all things climate we do a daily climate update once again, just like we do pandemic update. We had stopped it for a while when I was having all those breathing difficulty issues, but I decided to start it back up again. All right, we do want to go back to the wastewater scan website. We want to take a look at a few more wastewater sites. Let's just randomly look at them around the country. I say, let's go to Pennsylvania. Remember I introduced about a week and a half, well, maybe almost two weeks ago now, that in Pennsylvania, they now added on University Park, which is State College, Pennsylvania. It's where Penn State University is. It's the smaller wastewater site there, but hey, a wastewater site is a wastewater site. I'm glad they added this. For COVID, it is medium at this time and dropping. RSV is still high, but it's dropped off pretty significantly. No influenza detected, no HMPV detected. I don't know why. Maybe there are just no cases at this time. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Norovirus, it's dropping at this time, and there are no detections of MPOX at this time at this wastewater site. Now let's go out to the central regions of the United States, and I say let's go out to Iowa and see what's going on there. Let's go to Iowa City. How about we see what's going on there just west of Iowa City, because curiosity's got the better of me. Let's see how uh, your levels are, and you can see at this time, Still high for COVID. It's dropping, but not very fast. It's a slow drop. RSV was dropping. Most recent update, for whatever reason, did go up again. Influenza is low. HMPV is low. No hepatitis problems at this time. And there was a detection back on November 8th of MPOX. That is never a good thing. And let's continue on here. I wish I could show you New Mexico and Arizona. There's just nothing for you. Nothing at all. Let's go to... Colorado and see what's going on there. We can check maybe there on the CDC website. Doesn't always update frequently. North Parker, Colorado at this time is seeing not much of a drop for COVID. It dropped a little bit, but it's really bouncing around all over the place. You're still at high levels. RSV at this time is dropping. Influenza 
however, was dropping and now it's starting to rise again. Still high levels. HMPV is low. Norovirus, wow, a rapid rise at this time in norovirus levels. That's not good to see. Let's do another wastewater site because I want to see what's going on in other areas. How about we come over to Alaska? There's just one site in Alaska. I do have to refresh this. Apologies, the website always freezes up on us. But let's see that one wastewater site that is up in Alaska, can we? We'll just pull it up on the map here and go up to Alaska because I'm curious as to what's going on up there. And we are going to Anchorage, Alaska. Here we go. Let's see here. All right. COVID levels at this time, they are very high, but they are starting to drop. RSV continues to rise in Alaska. Influenza continues to rise. HMPV is dropping. Norovirus is leveled off at this time, though it is coming in at high levels. And you can see there are no issues with MPOX at this time. All right, continuing on, let's take a look at some more data, shall we? And we can see... COVID, it's likely declining in many places at this time. Here's COVID. It's likely declining or is declining in many places. D.C. and Mississippi are still likely growing. And as for influenza, it's still growing. It's in the dark shade of growing in Vermont and Oklahoma at this time. Elsewhere, it's either stable, likely declining, or declining at this time. Taking a look at the hospital situation for COVID, it's 32,861 people admitted in the past week. Taking a look at the latest variant, and JN.1 by far leads the way at 85.7%. The next variant behind it is the old HV.1 at just 5.3%, and all the other variants have been continuing to decrease because JN.1 is clearly leading the way. All right, wanted to show you Philadelphia's EMS numbers. Still can't do that. I'm starting to wonder if it's the end of that. We'll see. But we can do a live look at what's going on in the suburbs, and sometimes it's not the volume of calls. And that's the case right now in Montgomery County. It's not the volume, but it's the type of calls. And there's quite a few uh, bad calls here. Respiratory emergency, multiple cardiac emergencies, at least three of them. I'm seeing stroke. I'm seeing seizures, fall victim, subject in pain. Yeah, not good right now. And Chester County, not a lot of calls, but there's a few one on here that aren't good. Sick person, heart problems, sick person, stroke, and hemorrhaging has popped up as well. All right, let's check and see what's going on with New Jersey today. 1,144 people in the hospital, 50 people on a ventilator at this time, and this is 69 out of 70 hospitals reporting. In the ICU at this time, you have 150 patients in the ICU. That is still a high number, and that is not a good number. Discharges. 113 discharges at this time. And let's go over to New York State. 2,112 people tested positive in the last 24 hours. And coming here to hospitalizations, they actually started a Tuesday dropping significantly. That's a big deal because, as you know, Tuesday starts a new week. So usually Tuesday, when a wave is going up, which right now it's going down, but when it's going up, we would see the biggest increase on a Tuesday. To see a big decrease on a Tuesday is a big deal. It means we're going to continue to see numbers rapidly dropping in New York State. 2,628 today versus 2,732. That, my friends, is a big drop. Let's take a look at New York City and see what's going on there. We'll have to uh, let this do its refresh. Then we will zoom it in. Zoom in to New York City. I want to know what the number is there. New York City did drop as well to 1,148 to today 1,128. So, yes, that number is dropping as well. That is a good thing. All right, let's end today a little differently. Let's go back and take a look at Walgreens numbers. We know Walgreens is 28.7% nationally. That's down 1.2%. And let's just take a look at current view. Who has the highest positivity right now? Well, one of those states would be Wyoming, where the current positivity is 50%. Only 10 people got tested at Walgreens. Not enough. And if more people got tested, that positivity number would drop. New York State continues to be really high as well. Again, less testing equals higher positivity. But that positivity rate, it is dropping somewhat. It's just really high, 45.7%. And when we go to changes from prior week, you can see uh, New York State, you can see that positivity rate is dropping. But again, they're just not doing enough testing to really bring that number down. I think over time, that number will continue to go down. Uh, let's take a look at somewhere else that's having high positivity rate. Nevada. Nevada is at 45 
0.5%. Total tests, just only 44. So yes, they are not doing enough testing at this time. And let's take a look at this. Can we take a look at the positivity rate down in Puerto Rico? It's being listed on the map. Well, I guess we can't actually click on it, but you can see here, it does stand out on the map, telling me that their positivity rate at this time would be really high right now. And you can see here, it's coming up red when we take a look at the changes. And here we go. Puerto Rico positivity rate is 48.4% at this time. That's actually up 1.7%, and that's with a slight increase in testing. So we may actually see a wave start in Puerto Rico. We've seen that happen before late winter going into spring where Puerto Rico starts to see a wave. It's something we'll start keeping an eye on. I'll start doing some research to see if there's any news on Puerto Rico. Also, let's take a look at this real quickly. What is going on in Alabama? Alabama has their positivity rate up by 7.8%. That's 28.8% versus 21%. But you have to remember here. Take a look. Big decrease in testing. 243 versus 404. Alrighty, guys. That's all I have for today. That does it for today's edition of the Pandemic Update. If you learned anything, give this video a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, by all means, subscribe to my channel down below. If you know anyone that needs to see this content, by all means, share this with them. If you want to know what's going on with the climate and weather, go to my other channel, at Climate Data Report down below. Subscribe to that one, and you will get a video almost every day. It's not going to be constantly daily. There may be a day here and there where I don't do a video there, but it's back to uh, regular updates on that channel. I will see you guys all again next time. Until I see you again next time, leave a comment down below, stay safe, and have a fantastic Tuesday afternoon. Thanks for watching.